Beautiful. Thank you for your giving and thank you, instrumentalists, for your playing. That just was so conducive for setting the stage for worship. The song they were playing speaks of glorify thy name in all the earth. And he is certainly worthy to be praised. Let's continue uh, in music and singing as Brother Luke Brinkman comes to lead us in the singing right now. Get a songbook and join in as we make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Song number 365 we're going to start with. Song number 365. I... Remember when my burdens rolled away. Three hundred sixty-five. I remember when my burdens rolled away. I had carried them for years, night and day. When I sought the blessed Lord and I took him at his word. Then at once all my burdens rolled away, rolled away, rolled away. I am happy since my burdens rolled away, rolled away, rolled away. I am happy since my burdens. pages song number 362 if you remember that day when your burdens rolled away this next song rings more true i now belong to the king song number 362 let's stand as we sing i belong to the king i'm a child of his love I shall dwell in his palace so fair, for he calls of its bliss in yon heaven above, and his children in splendor shall share. child. 
His mercy and kindness so free are unceasingly mine wheresoever I go and my refuge unfailing is He I belong to the King I'm a child of His love and He never forsaketh His own He will call me someday to his palace above I shall dwell by his glorified throne I belong to the king and his promise is sure that we all shall be Just a couple more pages, song number 357. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed through His infinite mercy, His child and forever I am. continually dwell. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed, His child and forever I am. I think of my blessed
Praise the Lord. That was beautiful. Singing and playing and a group of worshipers focusing on our Redeemer. Very appropriate. We do want to prepare our hearts for prayer this morning. And uh, we have several requests, but we also have some thank yous that we need to give to the Lord. Some answers to prayer. As I try to remind you often that you need to give the Lord a receipt for what he sends before you expect to receive anything else. And we need to give the Lord some receipts for some answers to prayer. Uh, last week we were praying for Carol McClellan and she is here today doing much better and we're thankful for that. Last week we were play, praying for Esther and she is much better and here with us Today, we are thankful for those answers to prayer. As a matter of fact, we were also praying for Linda McGill last week, and though I don't see her this morning, she uh, did have surgery this week and came through that surgery and was released and was able to be at work yesterday. So that's an answer to prayer. We need to thank the Lord for that. I also received... Uh, an update from Sister Ruth Ann yesterday regarding their son-in-law, David Hayes, that we have been praying for, who has been uh, in a long fight with cancer and has been through so much. And we have been praying for him for several months. But he is uh, healing, and uh, the report I got yesterday was very encouraging that um, the healing is taking place in the area where the surgeries have been, and uh, that's just a wonderful answer to prayer. So we have some receipts to offer, don't we? We need to say thank you, Lord, for answers to prayer. We do want to continue to pray for the Covert family, as we have mentioned earlier this past Wednesday, of course, with the sudden and tragic, unexpected loss of Diana Covert. Uh, that's, uh, that's a big loss, and, uh, of course, anyone is a loss, but uh, it's a big loss for uh, families right here as well as her immediate families. And uh, so let's pray for all of the extended families, especially her her husband, uh, Wayne Covert. Uh, they were married nearly 49 years, and I know that that's going to be such a, a void and vacancy in his life. So let's pray for him and pray for God's support and strength to lift him and carry him. We want to keep Betty Tolbert in our prayers as well. Uh, she is continuing to recover. And uh, let's pray for Mary Brown. Uh, I miss her today. She's had a lot of uh, uh, issues happening again this week. It seems like she has a lot of uh, up and down uh, problems physically. So let's pray for her. And then Andy was telling me about his brother, Bill. Bill Brown, no relation to Mary Brown. Same color, but uh, not, not brothers or sisters. But anyway, um, let's pray for Bill, his brother, who is uh, not uh, doing very well in his fight against cancer. And then also received a message from Tammy regarding her niece, Athena is her first name, little one-year-old girl. And let's pray for her. The, she's been having some seizures, and they really don't know for sure what's going on. And so let's, uh, let's lift her in our prayers. God knows her and knows all about her. And uh, so let's lift little Athena in our prayers. And then let's also continue to pray for Bill Ames, our dear brother that has continued to face so much in the last several months physically. Uh, let's just continue to do our part to hold him up in prayer. I encourage you to pray for this service. Every service is important. We need God's help afresh and anew today. We need his continued presence we don't have to ask him to come he's already here but uh, we we want him to dwell among us as we worship him today and uh, I would just encourage you to pray for this service and also pray for the camp meeting that's coming up beginning July the 22nd let's be praying that God will even now prepare the hearts of those that will be ministering to us details are on the bulletin board if you are not familiar with those details feel free to Look at that, but uh, let's be praying even now about our camp meeting coming up in just uh, a couple of weeks. I'm sure many of you have some unspoken requests. Lifting your hands, God sees and knows about all of those and cares. 
I'm going to invite you to stand with me as we look to the Lord for prayer. And as I always say, feel free to join right in. God uh, certainly can hear you pray as I pray. And feel free to join in as we talk to the Lord together. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we come to you today very grateful, very thankful for the answers to prayer that uh, you have chosen to give to us. We are very thankful. We we do want to be faithful, be among those that say thank you. And Lord, we thank you for giving a touch to uh, Carol McClellan as we prayed for her last week. And thank you for giving a touch to Esther Connor as we prayed for her last week. And thank you, Lord, for being with Linda in the hospital this past week and being with her through her surgery and then for making it possible for her to be released and even back to work yesterday. We pray that you would continue to help her and strengthen her. I pray also, Lord, for uh, those others that we are concerned about. We do thank you for helping David Hayes to make the improvements that he has. We know that he continues to need our prayer support. He has a long way to go, but we're grateful for the progress that we're hearing about, for the progress that has been made. We also, Lord, want to uh, continue to pray for Betty Tolbert. We thank you for bringing her through uh, the surgery that she had recently, but just continue to help her, Lord, to have strength and to recuperate and to be able to be back with us before too long. We pray also for Bill Ames. Our heart goes out to him as he has seemingly just continued to have uh, back sets and difficulties with uh, all that is associated with his problems. Lord, we know that you're very aware. We are not the ones that have to let you know because you don't know, but at the same time, you've told us to come and to bring our burdens and our concerns and to come boldly before your throne. And that's what we're doing today, Lord, because we believe in you and we believe and have experienced the results of you answering prayer. And we believe in prayer as you have uh, exemplified, even when you were on this earth, if it was important for you to pray, it's very important for us to pray. And so, Lord, we are bringing these petitions to you in confidence, knowing that you hear and you answer prayer. We pray also for uh, Bob Journey, Lord. We pray that you would continue to help him to improve and to be able to be back with us before long. And then we think about Mary Brown. We miss her today. And pray that you would be near to her. I pray that you would help her and, and continue to give wisdom to the doctors that are working with her. We know she had some more tests this week and uh, perhaps more yet to come. I just pray that you will help her and be with her. And Lord, be with Bill Brown. You know his needs and what he is facing. We know that it sounds like his condition is very serious but we know with you, Lord, that uh, you are able to heal cancer just as easy as you can heal a toothache. We know that you are able. We know that you don't always choose to. And we certainly want to be among those that would pray as you did, not my will, but thine be done. And yet we do want to be faithful to ask because your word also tells us you have not because you ask not. And so we are asking in submission to your will and uh, trusting in his behalf. We also pray for little Athena, Lord. You know what's going on there in her little body and just help her, Lord, and help her parents and help the doctors, help those that are working with her. Give them wisdom, we pray. And uh, Lord, we certainly recognize our need of your help in this service. Every service is so important, as you well know. And Lord, this is no exception. We need your help afresh and anew today. You know the plans that you have that are yet uh, to unfold. And we just pray that you would guide and direct in every aspect of this service and the singing that is yet to come and in the sharing of your word that uh, above and beyond all that your name will be honored and glorified. We also think in, re in reference to the uh, upcoming camp meeting uh, just a little over uh, nearly two weeks away. I just pray, Lord, that you will even now begin to prepare hearts and prepare those that will be ministering to us through song and through word and uh, Lord we know we don't have to tell you but there's a lot of details that go into preparations and 
And we are very saddened with the loss of Diana, who is such an integral part of the planning and involved there at the camp meeting. I just pray, Lord, that uh, you would continue to prepare all of our hearts and be with the dear families connected with Diana, her husband Wayne, and all of the extended families, those represented right here today. We know, Lord, that you care about each one and you are interested while we are so often taken by surprise with the unexpecteds and the tragedies of life, yet we are very confident that you are never taken by surprise and that you have a plan in the midst of it. While our hearts ache and hurt, we can continue to trust in you. And Lord, you saw every hand that was lifted for prayer today and we just pray that you would administer the help that is needed in all of those cases. We know, Lord, there are some spiritual needs that we are concerned about, we are burdened for. We know that you know about them, you are interested in them. And, and uh, Lord, we have at times done our best to do what we can do, but we know that it comes down to the fact that uh, you are the only one that can truly enlighten and alarm or convict the hearts of those that have needs. And so we just place all of this in your hands today, trusting in you for your continued guidance and instruction. In your precious name we pray in the name of Jesus. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. It's always a joy to hear from various ones of you. And this morning we are looking forward to hearing from Dwayne and Renee Joslin as they come to share with us in song. Let's keep our hearts open and receptive to what God has for us through them today. writes that since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all the same testings we did, yet without sin. Therefore he is able once and forever to save those who come to God through him. He lives forever to intercede with God on their behalf. Who then will condemn us? None will. For Jesus Christ died for us and was raised to life for us. And he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it the most. Before the throne. high priest whose name is love whoever lives and pleads for me my name is graven on his hands my name is written on his heart I know that while in heaven he stands no tongue can bid me thence Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within. Upward I look and see him there who made an end to all my sin. Because the sinless Savior died, my sinful soul is counted free. For God the just is satisfied To look on him and pardon me To look on him and pardon me 
Look on him and pardon me. Behold him there, the risen Lamb, my perfect spotless righteousness, the great unchangeable I am, the King of glory and of grace, one with himself. Christ my Savior and my God, with Christ my Savior and my God. One with himself I cannot die, my soul is purchased by his blood, my life is hid with Christ on high. With Christ my Savior and my God, with Christ my Savior and my God. Jesus is the kind of high priest we need because he is holy and blameless, unstained by sin. He has been set apart from sinners and has been given the highest place of honor in heaven. God appointed his son Jesus with an oath and his son has been made the perfect high priest for us forever. Praise his name. Praise God. Thank you Dwayne and Renee for that beautiful fitting song and if you enjoyed that say a hearty amen. Praise God. The Holy Spirit has certainly orchestrated a common theme this morning. And you may have noticed that even in the song service, there was a theme that centered around redemption, redeemed. The song that they have just sung centers around the same theme, redemption. Being redeemed by the blood of the Lamb through the wonderful sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Praise God. And I want to continue with somewhat of that theme as we look over to one of the Gospels, Mark's Gospel and uh, verse 15. I will uh, dismiss the children, ages 12 and under, to go to their time of Bible study at this time if they so desire and invite the rest of you to Turn in your Bibles or in your electronic devices over to Mark chapter 15. And we are going to begin our reading with verse 6 and read through to verse 15. Mark chapter 15, verse 6, reading through to verse 15. And the context of the scripture lesson that we are reading is the time in which Jesus, just prior to going to the cross, is standing before Pilate. Pilate is a leader. He is a a government leader. He has authority. He actually has the authority to pronounce judgment in this case. He also has the authority to release And yet in the midst of it, he is concerned about what his popularity level would be, where he would rest in the polls. And uh, so he is using that, weighing out in his heart. He wants to release Jesus, and yet he doesn't want to make the angry mob any angrier. And we break into that in verse 6 of Mark chapter 15. If you are physically able to stand, I would invite you to do so in honor of the reading of God's Word. Mark chapter 15, beginning with verse 6. We read there, now at that feast, this is in reference to Pilate, it says, He released unto them one prisoner whomsoever they desired. 
There was one named Barabbas, which lay bound with them that had made insurrection with them, or with him, who had committed murder in the insurrection. And the multitude crying aloud began to desire him, that is Pilate, to do as he had ever done unto them. But Pilate answered them saying, and keep in mind, in his mind he's wanting to release Jesus. His tradition is that they allow one prisoner to go free at this time of the year for them to have a chance to start over. And he's wanting to release Jesus. So in the midst of this setting, he says, uh, Will ye, he's trying to influence them, and certainly not inappropriately, Will ye that I release unto you the king of the Jews? In verse 10, Mark writes, For he knew, and this was a fact, that the chief priests had delivered him for envy. In other words, that Jesus was not really guilty of anything, certainly not something that would cause him to be put to death. And uh, Pilate knew this. But in verse 11 we read, But the chief priests moved the people. Here they are working among the crowd and influencing and saying, No, tell him to release Barabbas. And the chief priests moved the people that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. And Pilate answered and said again unto them, What will ye then that I shall do unto him whom ye call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. Then Pilate said unto them, You see his, his transparency here for a moment. He says, Why? What evil hath he done? And they cried out the more exceedingly, Crucify him. And so Pilate, willing to content the people or make the people happy, he released Barabbas, this insurrectionist, this murderer, this man of violence. He released him to freedom and he delivered Jesus when he had scourged him to be crucified. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we come to you this morning. We are very grateful for your word that speaks to our hearts. We thank you for your spirit that also speaks to our hearts through your word and through song and through various means. Thank you for speaking to us through the songs that we sung together as a congregation. And thank you for speaking to us just, just moments ago through the beautiful song of Dwayne and Renee Joslin, as they shared to us a song of redemption. Lord, we just thank you for your word and ask that you would enlighten our hearts and our minds together today. In your precious name we pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. You may be seated. As I break into this story and we consider what it is saying to us today, I want us to consider this theme. He took my place. I want you to think about that. Jesus took my place. He took my place. He took your place. As we break into the story and Allow me to use my imagination a little bit as we look into the setting and we consider some historical background and put together the story that we have pieces of in this scripture lesson today. My mind goes to the prison cell that was dark and damp. You see, the civil rights leaders of that day had not yet arrived on the scene to force its structure to be renovated to near palatial standards. It was truly a foreboding place. The only illumination that would perhaps permeate the darkness of its surroundings would be the flickering flame of a candle at night or perhaps a little finger of light that would come through a small window located at the top of the cell and shadowed by bars to add to the dismal conditions of the setting that we focus in on today, we would recognize that uh, 
little crumbs that might be left behind from the meager amounts of food that would be given to the prisoners would sometimes be shared with little rodents that would also be crawling around in the darkness of that dismal surrounding. We could also further notice that as dismal as the physical surroundings were of that cell, they seemed minor compared to the darkness that was clouding the mind of the prisoner at this moment in time. Perhaps he was reflecting back. He was reflecting back to early days, way back to his childhood. The early days of his childhood, as he reflects back, were were good days. They were bright days. They were days of fun. And childhood was, was a time period in his life that he could reflect back on with no regrets, but as time has transpired and he's reflecting back, perhaps as he reflects into his mid to latter teen years, he remembers a change beginning to come into his own person. At that time and at that point, he began to to feel drawn into rebellion. It started out in what may have seemed innocent, insignificant areas, rebellion against Parents, rebellion against teachers at school, rebellion against any realm of authority. And he began, to, he began to sort of attract a bit of a following as he and some of the guys would just hang out. And, and uh, sometimes they would uh, steal things from uh, little stores that would seem small, minor, and insignificant. And they would get by and nobody would know about it, but uh, time transpired. And in the darkness of the surroundings and in the darkness of his mental thinking on this day, he remembers that that rebellion didn't seem to stop. It just seemed to progress. It seemed to get worse. And he remembers that eventually that following that he had, quite a a group, it began to grow and it led to more severe rebellion against authority. There were robberies that took place and and at those times as he reflects back at the initial time oh it seemed so exciting. They would get away and get into their little place of hiding and laugh and joke and talk about what they got done that day and how they had deceived someone and they got out of there and they couldn't catch him and they didn't know who was guilty. But As time transpired and as is so often the case, sin will take you farther than you have any idea that it will take you. It will cost you more than you are willing to pay. And it will keep you longer than you had planned to stay. In his mind, his darkened mind, and yet this time moment of reflecting he remembers that the rebellion increased and the following increased and they had to do more and more severe things until they began to push a rebellion against the government oh that just seems so fulfilling that just seemed to bring such uh, satisfaction to literally rebel against government leaders and As time progressed and as the rebellion progressed, ultimately it led to an insurrection. And he was a part of the leadership of that insurrection. And while it may not have been the intent, as is so often the case, as I've already stated, sin will take you farther than you're ever willing to go. And in the midst of that insurrection in a particularly particularly volatile moment that flared up, it becomes a very haunting memory to him now in this darkened cell as he reflects and he remembers that he literally snuffed out the life of another man. He became guilty He shed innocent blood. At the moment, it seemed the thing to do. At the moment, the evil within his heart and the evil within his mind and the desire to to push forth this spirit and attitude of rebellion just sort of covered up any kind of compunction or guilt. But now that he is in a place where he can think, in a place where he can reflect, he feels such 
regret. He remembers the horrible, horrible look on the face of the man that he killed. He remembers the horrible uh, feeling of what he felt afterwards when he got away from the scene. He remembers the heartache that that caused to that man's family. He remembers all that was associated with that. And in the midst of all of that, he was appropriately apprehended for his crime and placed in this dark, damp cell. If only, if only he could go back and change things. If only he could do things differently. If only he could back things up prior to that. But now, nothing can be done to change the past. Nothing can be done to change what has occurred. And then in this time, in this moment of reflecting, he remembers as he was there in that courtroom, he remembers hearing those words of the Roman judge. As the sound of that gavel came down and the words came forth very soberly, guilty, Guilty on three counts. Guilty of robbery. Guilty of insurrection. And most significantly, guilty of murder. He remembers those words. He remembered how they echoed in that courtroom. He remembers the regret deep in his heart. He knew he was guilty. As a matter of fact, he was guilty of more that they didn't even know about. But then he remembers the words of that Roman judge, as he uttered the words, sentenced to crucifixion. Oh, even in his hardened condition, even in his calloused condition, he was very aware of what the Roman crucifixion was all about, of how horrible it was, how excruciating the pain, how it was almost as if they made a sport of it in public. And even in his calloused, hardened condition, he dreaded, he dreaded the fulfillment of that sentence. But now, as he sits in that dark, damp, rodent-infested cell, a mere thin mat on a dirt floor that would provide a little bit of comfort to rest on. In that moment of time, he is well aware of what today is all about. Today is the day that he is to pay the penalty for his crimes. Deserve it? Yes. Guilty? Yes, guilty of more. And yet, filled with regret. This is the day that he will pay for his crimes. And as he sits in that dark, damp, dismal cell, he begins to hear a roar. He hears a roar outside of where he is. It's a mob. It's a crowd. He can't hear exactly what they're saying and he strains. He's sort of pulled from the foreboding of his memory lane that he has been walking down. And as he listens intently trying to hear, he hears it sounds like a chant. It sounds like they're chanting and they're saying, Crucify! 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 And you think, oh, that's, that's for me. It's just about time. It's the day. Today is the day I'm going to be crucified and pay the penalty for my, my crimes. Sends chills up and down his back. And as calloused, as hardened as this man has been, he is, he is moved to tears in the midst of that dark and dismal condition. Then... He hears the, that roar again and he hears, he hears, is he hearing right? He hears his, he's pretty sure he hears his own name. 
he hears the name, we, what, Barabbas. We, what, Barabbas. Again, chills. Oh, race up and down his spine. The hair stands up on the back of his neck. Oh, that bloodthirsty crowd. They're ready to tear him from limb to limb. Oh, the regret. Oh, if he could go back and do it over. But there's no hope. There's no chance. He's about to pay the penalty for his crimes. And then, in the midst of all of that that he is hearing, his mind has just been racing, racing way back into the history and then right up to the present. And suddenly, the stillness of his setting is broken with the echo of footsteps on the cobblestone hallway of that prison in which he is incarcerated. He hears the sound of that prison guard. It's really not unfamiliar. It's a sound he has heard often because that prison guard would come and put through a little place in the door something for him to eat and drink. And so the sound is not uncommon. It is actually very familiar. But today it's... It's so much more foreboding because he is anticipating what is about to happen. He has heard the crowd. He has heard the chant. He now hears the footsteps of the prison guard. And this time, instead of handing something through an opening in the door, he hears a key go into the lock on the door. He hears the key turn. He listens as the door begins to creak and he sits there acting as if he doesn't have a clue of what's going on, but he is very aware of what is going on. This calloused, hardened criminal, murderer, insurrectionist, robber, man of rebellion is about to face the sentence for his crimes. The prison guard looks at him and says nothing, merely points. He gets the gesture. He knows what it means. Follow me. He arises. He stands. He walks with dread as he follows that prison guard back down that cobblestone hallway, back up a a bit of a flight of stairs and then to a place where he is about to be ushered out into the light, a place he hasn't seen for many, many months. He is anticipating suddenly as soon as he walks out being torn apart, as it were, by that bloodthirsty mob that he has heard screaming and crying, crucify, crucify, and hearing, we want Barabbas, we want Barabbas. He's anticipating what is right up ahead. And he walks out in the light of day. He's, he's ready, sort of. Nothing happens. In fact, the crowd isn't even near him. It seems like they're off in a distance. He's perplexed. He's confused. He looks at the prison guard. And the prison guard just looks at him and says, You're free. Free? What what do you mean? I heard the chant. I heard the crowd. I even heard my name. Prison guard turns and points. He points to one that he can see faintly from a distance. He sees blood all over his face. He sees that he is so badly beaten He sees a crown of thorns on his head. He sees the bloodthirsty mob over there screaming, crucify him, crucify him. And Barabbas stands there so perplexed and so confused. And the prison guard says, he, he took your place. He took your place. As I stand before you today, dear friends, I want you to know that Jesus took my place. He took your place. 
Though we may not have been as guilty of the horrific crimes that Barabbas was, yet we were guilty. Yet we deserved penalty. Yet we deserved punishment for our sin. But He took your place. Dear friends, as we have sung today, as has been sung, about the sacrifice that Jesus was willing to give, about His willingness to to be an intercessor now, seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding in your behalf, you need to recognize that He took your place. I want us to stand together this morning. I want Lorie to come and play the song, Jesus paid it all. I felt the Lord laying this message on our heart early this morning and I know it's somewhat of a familiar story but I felt the Lord would have us present it in this way to to remind us, to startle us to the realization that He took my place. He took your place. He didn't have to, yet He chose to. He chose to provide for us redemption. Praise God. Redemption. It's for whosoever will. It's for one and all. It really doesn't matter what you've done. Are we guilty? Yes. But because of Him, He removes the guilt. He brings forgiveness. He brings transformation. He makes us into a new creation. I want us just to bow our heads for a few moments here as Larie plays and perhaps we will sing a verse or two of that together. But I want you to think about it momentarily. Jesus, Jesus took my place. He paid it all. He didn't deserve what he got, but he did it willingly because he loved us. If you're here this morning and you have not received the benefit of redemption that he has already paid for, I strongly admonish you to step forward and meet me at this altar and let us have a time of prayer together. Jesus paid it all, every bit of it. He paid it all. As you think about perhaps your own past, not to dwell on it necessarily, but to reflect on the reality that you were guilty, I want you to focus on the reality that because of Jesus paying it all, He took care of it all. He took care of Barabbas. He has taken care of all since Him right up to the present moment and including us. If you're here this morning and have not received the benefit of what He paid for, I invite you to come forward and receive what He offers to you. I want us to sing a couple of verses. It's found on number 218. Song number 218, if you care to sing along, you're welcome to. Jesus paid it all, all to Him I owe. Fact is, sin had left a crimson stain, but He washed it. He washes it. He offers to you through redemption and through the work that He is doing even today. As the scripture was read from the book of Hebrews, oh, What a beautiful story of what Jesus has done for us. Let's sing the first and third verse this morning and we'll see how the Lord directs from that point forward. Verse 1. I hear the Savior say Thy strength indeed is small Child of weak watch and pray find in me 
thine all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Verse 3. For nothing good have I whereby thy grace to claim. I'll wash my garments white in the blood of Calvary's land. Jesus paid it Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. I appreciate the presence of the Lord this morning in our midst. I appreciate His faithfulness. I certainly do not profess to be able to look into the hearts of any individual. I would not make any kind of a pretense that way. I just simply do my best to share what I feel the Lord lays on my heart, and I have done that today. I would not necessarily know of anyone in our midst that doesn't already know Jesus in a personal way, but I just want you to think very seriously. If you do not know Him in a personal way, He stands with outstretched arms. As He took the place of Barabbas, so He took my place, and so He took your place. As we stand for a moment with our heads bowed and no one looking around, just for a few moments, if there is anyone here this morning that maybe God has spoken to you and you haven't responded outwardly, but you would just like to express a need by lifting your hand and putting it right back down. That's not to trick or trap anyone, but to give you opportunity to acknowledge a need. If God has revealed that to you this morning, it's a, it's a first step to getting help, acknowledging a need. Is there anybody like that? Just very quickly put your hand up and right back down again. He knows every one of us. No one is looking around, so it's not to embarrass you or trick or trap you. Anybody like that just want to lift your hand very quickly and put it right back down? Amen. God has been so faithful, and I appreciate His presence and His faithfulness. And I trust that this morning we can at least be reminded. Sometimes we need to be reminded reminded of the price that He paid for us. Amen. Let's sing that third or fourth verse in conclusion this morning. And when before the throne I stand in Him complete Jesus died my soul to save my lips shall still repeat Jesus paid it all all to him I owe sin had left a crimson stain he washed it Praise God. Let's pray together in closing. Dear Lord, thank you for meeting with us as you have today. Thank you for every song that has been sung and played. Thank you for your word that has been here for us to consider today. Thank you for every person that is here. Lord, we are very aware that you know everything about us. There's nothing that we can hide from you and we just ask you in your faithfulness continue to speak to our hearts 
And help us, Lord, to not forget what you have done and what you have provided through the redemption that you paid for on the cross. We thank you. We love you. And we appreciate you. In your precious name, the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You are dismissed. <laughs>